So Big U responded to that whole interview. He put up a picture with DJ Khaled. And people were saying that he got the time frame wrong. Of course he put it up with the bro. That was the whole play. So listen. Look, when Nip brought him over there, right? Balls get hot. He said, this nigga, this nigga think he bigger than me. He bringing niggas to this magnitude to the set. Nigga, that's supposed to come through me. Oh, I'm supposed to be there. So what'd he do? He called Loose Cannon, the squad. This is why I'd be like, I don't know why they playing with Loose. They know what Loose do. He called Loose, send Loose over there. Go shut it down. Right? So when Loose get over there on the shutdown, right? They trying to politic with Loose. So Big U hit loose get him on the phone so when he get a big loose thinking big you gonna get on the phone and give his orders and they gonna clean it up you know what big you do who that Khaled? yeah yeah it's me big you what, what's up oh man uh shit i don't know what nephew you on yo loose loose fall back you see the play loose cannon looking crazy as a motherfucker fall back nigga you just didn't got me up and got the nigga, what is you talking about? Fall back, right? So now loose like, hey homie, nigga, you he like nah loose, I got it. It's all right, yo, Kelly. I'ma holla at you. What's your line? So he send loose over there with the press, get loose close to the nigga on the jack, and then act like to to Khaled, he's stopping loose cannon them. Nipsey them ain't no fool. They know who loose moving for. Loose would come in here and tell you he was a torpedo on it. And after that, he started milking the shit out of Cali. The, old, the same way he got next to T.I. We set up the WAC 100 press with all the bloods and the Crip show up to our favorite Denny's in Westwood and you saved the day and that's your contact. We was lining niggas like that up for years. Yeah, but see, Big U, Big U so fucking stupid, right? The nigga... <laughs> He puts up the picture of Khaled and him and Fat Joe and Rich Player, right? But I think he thinks that picture was before Nipsey died, because I think he was that's trying after. to- that's yeah, exactly. after. Yeah, exactly. The pic the picture was after Nipsey died, but I think he was trying to put that picture, trying to show niggas like it was before, trying to like discredit Sam's story. But all he did was verify Sam's story with that but picture. But let me tell you where he fucked up at. Sam never said his name, me and Luke Kennedy. Right. He been said the name a while back. When Sam mentioned it, niggas with a brain said, oh, hold on. Niggas, the powers that be had a problem was whoop the whoop with Khaled over here. Hold up. That's what Wack and Loose been talking about. Sam never said the nigga name. The, the dumbest thing he could do is respond to Sam's interview. And identify to himself. Sam's interview is now letting people know, oh, you who Sam talking about without saying your name. Yeah, that's true because he didn't even say his name. He never it's said just, his name internet, one time in the whole alluded. interview. Yeah, the internet was just alluding that it could have been Big U, but they didn't know for sure. But I heard on the Drink Champs interview, he showed text messages or something, and it was about Khaled. So people kind of put nah, it was a Kev Mac interview. Oh, the Kev Mac. Bro, you seen that clip I just put up? Hell yeah, with the contracts. Did you? Hell <laughs> yeah, yeah, I seen that shit. Yo. No, what I got the game. I don't got no contracts on Nipsey. I never Nipsey was never I never had none contract. Oh yeah, Nip signed to me ten years, yep. Yeah. Two thousand nine to twenty. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so that means the marathon. Yep. Hello, that's me too. That nigga was smiling okay. like a motherfucker. I'm not with done. Right boy. I'm not done. You know the contracts. You see that? You see the date? Fifty three days after Nipsey died. May twenty third, twenty nineteen. You said whack 100 the contracts and then told me, pull up. I got the other ones too. You wanted me to make it look like I brought you out of the contracts and go at the estate. And I told you I'm not fucking with that. That's his kid's money. The nigga was just here. You was all in his face and you ain't say a word about it. That ain't gangsta. I ain't fucking with it. Hey, what, what what made you think, what do you think made him respond to that? Because people were saying like, this he's name. not smart, Chuck. Big U was a name that we amped and pumped because we was on some build the West Coast shit. Rolling 60s is a big gang, right? And when it came to the music industry, we chose him. Key to Rock was gone. We could have made it anybody. We chose him. You was you gonna be the face of that in that section. Everybody had their section. But with the problem with him with him, he felt like he was supposed to be the man. 
you can't be the man on a plan that already existed. He started losing the homies when he started doing interviews saying, if I would have been the street, death row wouldn't have been moving how they was moving. I don't know. He said that? On Paul Rue. That nigga went up on, on Breakfast Club, and I got the call. They say, whack, uh, we know what you've been doing, but this nigga getting beside himself. I can send you screenshots and text messages, nigga, where you see me on his bumper, nigga. Telling him, nigga, I don't need you for nothing, nigga. You could go your way, I go mine. Slow it down, right? When he started to do that, they say, whack, you don't see what he doing. Y'all done gave him a few plugs. You think he got some, some motion. The nigga finna trust him, bro. We ain't worrying about that. That nigga ain't nobody with this shit, bro. He ain't nobody. We just didn't introduce him to a few niggas. He ain't got no business. He ain't got no budget. He ain't got no sense. He ain't got no know-how. He ain't got no radio streams. He ain't got no street teams. He ain't got none of that. He's a figment of our imagination, what we want him to look like to the people. When we want to turn that nigga off to this shit, we turn that nigga off. Look, Chuck, listen. Give me one of his musical accolades. Yeah, I can't. Give me one. one. Give me an album drop, a gold, a, a platinum. Give me one. Yeah, I can't call one. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You think that uh, Black Sam put that in that interview, though, to like shut Big U up? Because he was he been going on a campaign. Like, Let's just fuck say with this. I don't talk to Black Sam directly, but I talk to him indirectly. Black Sam put a call in a couple months ago and said, the things y'all been doing is motivating me to, to, to speak. And this is it's the first time. Damn, that's crazy. Because uh, I was wondering, like, Black Sim, he held back for a minute. And then he, he mentioned that. And he said that was the day before his death. Should he Bro, you notice he never mentioned Big U was helpful with this. He was fundamental with this. Big U was part of us when we did this. Oh, we, he never mentioned his name and nothing. Is his like you know what I wonder is it so he ain't no pictures of Big U in that box because uh, on that interview, uh, Big Boy was talking about it's a box like a collection box and he was thanking uh, Black Sam was thanking thanking him basically for being involved and being you know in his career and all that. So oh, Big you U probably about, ain't in that you talking box. About Big Boy? Yeah, Big Boy. Yeah, Big Boy. That's he helped all of us. I mean, that's that's. You know, that's, that's, that's our funk flex. You know, that's the voice of the city when it comes to radio. You know what I'm saying? That's Greg Street in Atlanta. Funk flex up there. Cosmo Kev in Philly. You know, he he, he one of those, right? Um, but you ain't got, bro, when I tell you, what Big you did do to him is come to us to get him on the tour, took direction on how to get his deal. I told the nigga what to do, what not to do. I said, bro, the nigga got his own movement. Don't bully the nigga. He got his own movement. Let him grow. Stand with the nigga. Show the nigga you with him. I said, because they, they already watching you. Nigga, 45 days after Nipsey got that deal, went to New York with Johnny Shipes. He called the nigga Big U and said, bro, I don't think me and you going to vibe together. You ain't good for my brand or what you trying to do. I'm trying to go a whole nother direction. Nigga, that's when he knocked that nigga out. Uh, um, Nipsey came back, did a song, dissed the nigga in the song. With this and him in the song, and then that's when all that shit happened. You talking about the, the knockout? You talking about like that that uh fight that happened in the alley? No, that's right there, the same where he got killed. It happened the same spot. Same, same spot. Same spot. Yeah, Damn, is that what uh who was that who be on here? Um, yeah, I'll start with the R. Be over there with y'all. Who? Uh, damn, that's about Rose. Rose. Yeah, yeah Rose. 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 That's that's what Rose was talking about. That incident. Yeah, yeah Rose was there. He was there. Yeah, so it's like that's why I'm nigga. You got to remember, me and Nipsey ain't never had a direct problem. His problem was me with my ties to Big U, and my problem with Nipsey is I don't give a fuck about what you and Big U going through. Any nigga in here from New York who was following the movement, we broke Nipsey in New York on New York radio, Hot ninety seven, Shade forty five. So when Slay went to go do his, his That's album. A That's a fact. Nigga, he, we broke that nigga. We had that nigga up there more than everybody, like four times. Had the DJs in the city spinning his music, all that shit. Right? We actually, if niggas remember, he fucked up one time when Slay tried to get him to freestyle and he locked up. Right? So Slay so said, yeah, whack, I'm working on my album. Need to burn some nip. I say, Big U, like, whack, Big you know, I say, man, I don't give a fuck about what y'all got going on, bro. This nigga done been up here four times. 
Nigga, I'm the gateway from LA to New York for radio. So, nigga, I'm not can't go back tell Slay no, nigga. Tell Nip, hell that business, nigga. Like, he, if he's smart, he want to keep that right anyway. So, you know, uh, Big, you feed me, man, the nigga this, the nigga this, the nigga that. It probably about two years later, we both end up at Platinum Motorsport. We all get our cars done on, on uh, Melrose. We both dolo. Perfect. I jump out, he jump out. He like, cuz, I need to holler at you. I said, I need to holler at you too. He said, whack me, you being six old business. I said, nigga, I don't give a fuck about y'all business. Nigga, what I'm in y'all business. Well, homie, I know that you know a lot of shit that going with him come through you. You know, I, I was around. I said, look, I don't give a fuck about none of that. My problem with you is I let you go up there with Slate four, five times through this nigga, but it was for you. Slate reached out for his verse, nigga, because you getting into it with this nigga. You just lied for Slay his verse. He said, I'm rolling 60s. I'm out of line for that. Get Slay on the phone. He talked to Slay right there in the parking lot. I'm here with Wack. I didn't even realize at the end of the day, I wasn't fucking with nothing. Fucking with Big U. That's what it was, but you shouldn't have got caught up in this shit because what you really did for a nigga, and I'm going to make that happen. And from that day forward, at least once, twice a month, me and Nip was on the jack. You ain't never heard Nipsey speak on me in no other way. Ever. Hey, when J-Rock was talking about something about a, a motorsport uh, parking lot incident, is he talking about this moment you just described? J-Rock wasn't there. You got to remember, Nipsey used to call me. J. I saved J-Rock life. J-Rock was homeless. YG then fired the nigga. He was homeless. He kept calling me for a job. We had a bent to doing Vegas and Planet Hollywood with Gabe. I said, show up. I put him on the bus. Me and Gabe getting into it. Who the fuck is this fat black ugly nigga got on my motherfucking bus? He security nigga got a gun whack. I don't know this nigga. I said, well, listen, nigga. He, I, I, he, I'm responsible. I forced him every time we move it. Show up, show up, show up. After about a month, Gabe, you know, relaxed to the nigga. Then we had to go to Miami for 30 days to record at Cool and J Studio. I fly the nigga out there on my dime and put him in the in the house I had game in, right? So game said, all right, we're going to put the nigga on payroll, right? So everything was great for them years, for like two, three years. And then one day game and uh, the other homie was leaving the club and game going to back out in his Rolls Royce. And he sees some commotion going on behind his car. And he had already warned me, yo, bro, this nigga J-Rock be extra out, be doing too much, causing problems. Like, he be trying to start fights and shit, but like, it ain't like that serious. He need to know how to secure, right? So J-Rock get into it with a nigga behind game car. This was the last straw game, and the homie had to get out and help J-Rock because the nigga was whooping J-Rock ass. He said, why? I'm not paying the security. That I got to get out and help fight because he started the fight that didn't even need to be going on. That's when I let him go. So Nip would start calling me like, yo, whack. What you be experienced? I said, look, he got baby mama problems. He going to lie to you when she tripping. Other than that, the nigga going to do his job. He can't fight. I said, he good there to have a gun, but I don't know if he going to shoot because the incident happened in the P.J. Watts over there when T.I. Then was over there. When them niggas took off on all them niggas, the nigga didn't bust, right? So I don't know, right? I said, far as just a big body at the door, cool. Securing you directly, nah. And as y'all see, that incident at um, BET, the JW Marriott, where Nip ended up having to squabble with a nigga. Y'all saw that, right? Hell yeah, Nip slapped the Yeah, nigga. everybody saw that. Yeah, J-Rock, I said, bro, he's a good body to have at the dope all the other shit that we you can't depend on that right that's why game let him go right so wasn't nobody at platinum but me and nip that was it, it was all wasn't nobody but me and nip nip was in his Maybach. i think i might have been in my range or so 